from the mechanism that holds the weight up doesn't work, and it saves me the nickel. Just save the nickel. So come on up, check it out, check the weight, and work your way this way to the family. the PPG Plaza. Uh, to the right of that's Mount Washington. If you're familiar with Mount Washington, where the inclines go up. Okay, we're the same elevation as Mount Washington here. Now, if you keep coming left, there's a water tower. Right behind the water tower, you can see the top of the Cathedral Learning for the University of Pittsburgh. And then that community in front of that's Morningside. Left of Morningside, we've got the parking lot for the Pittsburgh Zoo. So if you look up into the tree line, just left of the parking lot, see that A-shaped silver roof that's just sticking up out of the trees there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the monkey house in the zoo. Yeah. Now, it was a couple years back we did a tour. No, it was a February tour. The group... The hop failed for Elise Violina. <laughs> screen TVs. He hid that here then. Now we're going to listen to four player pianos and we'll talk about the wealthy. Uh, but let's start here with the Seabird photo player. This is the instrument you need to have if you're watching a sonic film back in 1888 to 1927. And if you had somebody that knew how to play it, it's a pretty neat machine. It's an organ and a piano. All the acoustic instruments are in the two side cabinets and then the sound effects are spread out throughout the machine. But if you didn't have somebody who could play it, a roll came with every film. So you thread the film, put the roll in, and of course, folks, you always would start with the roll. <laughs> silent film, somebody's getting clobbered, and you want the sound effect to be at the right place at the right time, so folks, let's use our imagination. Firehouse. So now the scene changes to the railroad track, and we're looking, here comes the choo-choo train down the track. The child is safe, and the world, why it's all good again. <laughs> so it creates all of the sound effects you would need for the side of films. In 1927, the talk was came on. Happy days, but you got the words on the roll. 
take a gather round and sing along if you'd like to. Happy days are here again. Tell me about this, folks, it's 1920 and you got George Gershwin in your parlor playing for you. You're gonna gather around and sing the words right off of the rumble, folks. Your first karaoke machine. in there, little uh, bellows and uh, little pipes that they just couldn't find. It's from their, their observation, it's the only one in the world. <laughs> That's a pretty neat machine. We just got a few little, nice little traveling music as we come up the steps. Mm -hmm. Now this is the uh, picture Charlie sent for the ah. sculpture down below. There he is. Did a pretty good job capturing that. Now this is another cylinder player, about the same size box as the one down below. It shows you play six songs as well, except this one's got a little bird in the front of it. It's going to act just like a little songbird. I mean, all the motions of the bird are pins on the cylinder. And the beak, right along with the music. Now, Dwight Porter that I told you about, he just brought this back to us today. He repairs our cylinder player. They were rare, but four was extremely rare. And these are taxidermy birds. Ma'am, in 1874, they'd be dead by now anyway. And their purpose were to teach canaries how to sing. I mean, the gears, the hinges they built into those birds. And the two birds in the middle each have their own little slide whistle down on a box tied to a hose that goes into the cavity of the bird. So it sounds like it's coming from those birds. 